It was so predictable, so boring. I'm, I'm out there looking for excitement. This is Tice working. This is where Dad works? Yeah. What does your dad do for work? And I fuck told you straight up that I was. Right. And what are you trying to do? I'm not trying to do fucking shit. You're just sitting here being a complete dick. I would have to say making this film was like the greatest uh, professional and personal experience I've ever had and it affected me deeply. I mean, I was coming off this disaster called Blair Witch 2. Erica, I've got the same thing, okay? It's nothing. It's like poison oak or something. I can't. They're growing. And sort of curled up in a fetal position on the floor uh, because the movie was so reviled and uh, a light bulb went off in my head and I said, hey, uh, I'm gonna call Metallica about getting the film together because uh, the last thing I wanna do is work in Hollywood again. <laughs> and these guys were like talking about their feelings. I knew, man, this is, this is not what, this is not what uh, people are gonna expect. I don't know, I guess the playing part, being in the room, and then mainly being in the room with Lars, playing music together, I guess I had higher expectations. And I don't know, maybe I'm disappointed in myself. Maybe, I don't know. I'll talk about that, and what does that mean? We had to sign confidentiality agreements. They had to have a final say over what the film was going to look like. Uh, but nonetheless, they gave us access to some of these incredible moments. And after a while, they forgot we were there. Hi, this is Kurt from Metallica. And if you want money, you'll listen to us. Well, you know, we shot about 1,600 hours over a three-year period. Um, but I, you know, the film is not a short film. It's like two hours and 20 minutes. Um, I think it represents, a, you know, what we experienced over the, those three years. There's really nothing that I wish we could have shown. Where I be laid, I can't find it. it. Just, it doesn't work. Ultimately, they got a little nervous and we had a big intense conversation about, well, do we want our fans really to see this stuff? You're really helping matters. You're really good at that. I was straight up with you and I told you, I'm in a shit mood and what have you been doing? You're picking at me all night. And about midway through that conversation, James and Lars just looked at each other and said, you know, either we do this full on and let these guys do what they want to do or we don't do it at all. I wake up the next day somewhere in some bed. I don't know who this person is next to me and I'm drunk, completely hung over and have a show to do and I don't want to lose any of this the stuff I have, I know it could all go away at one time. And that's a tough part of life. And I'm, I'm working on really hard on being the best dad and father and husband I can be. And the best me. <laughs> one time during the recording of the Ride the Lightning record where me and him went out and show 42 beers later, I was like, dude, I love you. But it could never materialize until it got to that 42 beer point. It's a pretty unbelievably honest portrait of guys in crisis. And um, considering how image conscious and controlling these guys have been and how the music industry generally is, it's pretty amazing that we were able to get such a revealing portrait uh, of, of you know, one of the biggest bands of all time. <laughs>